All right, folks, so in this video, we're going to take a deeper look at this Red Odeo 100 amp hour battery. It's a 12.8 volt battery, and it is a lithium battery, specifically uh, lithium uh, iron phosphate, I believe is how you say that, and it's a LifePo 4 battery. Uh, in a previous video, I did a capacity test of this, and it actually rated higher than 100 amps. Uh, just a little bit higher, but uh, that, was, uh, that was a good thing to see. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to an inverter and we're going to do a draw test. This comes with a 100 amp uh, BMS, battery, battery management system, and it states that the max current discharge, um, the maximum continuous current discharge is 100 amps. And I believe it said it went to, let me take a quick look. Let's consult the manual real quick. And here we go. Our max discharge current for um, five seconds is 280 amps. Now, I don't have the ability to measure this at 280 amps because my um, my inverter is only 1,500 watts, which is around 127 amps. Um, but we can definitely test the 100. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to test that and we're going to push this battery a little bit and we're going to see how well it does. Uh, before we get started, I did want to say that I was given this battery free of charge in exchange for this video review from Red Odeo. And if you're the kind of person that is triggered by that, you might want to go find a cat video to watch. I also wanted to mention that uh, Red Odeo is an existing brand. They used to operate under the brand name Zooms, Z-O-O-M-S, but they recently changed their name to Red Odeo. I'm not sure why they did that, but it doesn't matter to me. All that matters to me is the quality of the battery. Now let's get this thing over to the table of truth. Okay, so what we have here is a just a little setup. We have the Red Odeo battery, and it is connected into our pure sine wave inverter, which is a 1500 watt inverter. We're using a Kiwitz clamp meter to be able to measure the amp draw on the battery. And then we use this Kuman meter to test the watts that are coming out of the inverter. And we'll see a correlation between watts and then the amp draw. So what I've done now is I've flipped on my heat gun, and that heat gun is from Harbor Freight. It's on the low setting, and you can see we're drawing about 51 amps right now, and everything looks good. It's about 610 watts. Now what I'm going to do in a few seconds is I'm going to kick this up to the high setting, and that's going to put even more draw or strain on our battery, and we're going to see how long that lasts. So when I turn it up, it immediately jumps to over 100 amps, which exceeds the rating for the BMS. So at this point, we're pushing the battery at its maximum documented power output. And we're looking at around 1,200 watts. Now, what I want to do is I want to put a little bit more load on this. So let me go see if I can find something else. I'm going to take a look and see if I can grab a space heater or something along those lines. Okay, here we go. And we have the space heater plugged in and it's running and it's drawing around 840, give or take watts. And that is putting a 72, 73 amp draw on the battery. So that's at three quarters of its rated capacity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plug the heat gun back into the inverter. So it's not going to come through the Kuman watt meter, but we'll be able to still see the amp draw on the battery. And here you can see we're at 140, 145 uh, amps of draw. So that's, that's around 45% higher than the rated 100 amps of discharge continuous current. And I figure this is a pretty good, pretty reasonable test. I would not recommend doing this to your battery, especially for a long or extended period of time. We're just doing it for demonstration purposes today to say that you're going to have no problem running this at its maximum rated output of 100 amps. So let's just get this go for a few more seconds. Now, what's going to happen is, is that my inverter is going to start to beep and it's going to start to make noise because I'm now pushing the inverter to its capacity. So I didn't want to leave this test going on for too long and I didn't want to push it any higher. If you listen, you can hear the inverter beeping. So I'm going to start turning this stuff off. I'm going to break this down and we're going to go back over to the main video area. All right, and that wraps up the test. Uh, I don't know about you, but I was impressed with how the battery performs. And since I've gotten this battery about three weeks ago, I've been using it for a variety of tests and I've been very happy with it. I like the battery a lot and I'm glad I got it. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, everybody.